Hello there. I'm Whitney Wurzel, but some of my dearest friends call me the Spider Lady because I love spiders. I could spend all day watching spiders, researching spiders, and sharing stories about spiders. But for right now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about spiders and their silk because spiders have long woven art, necessity, and science into their silk masterpieces. In ancient cultures, the creation of spiders and their aptitude for weaving can be attributed to a showdown between a mortal spinner and a powerful goddess. The name of that spinner? Arachne. Arachne was so talented at her craft that folks would come from miles around just to marvel at her work. One day, she was sitting outdoors working at her loom when all of the wood nymphs had come to the edge of the forest, and one of them commented, Arachne, you are so talented. Athena must have taught you everything you know. Well, Arachne threw her head back and scoffed and said, Ha! Huh, Athena has taught me nothing. Well, word of Arachne's pride soon made its way to Athena, who was not very happy. She came down from Mount Olympus and she challenged Arachne to a weaving contest. So when the contest began, Athena sat at one loom and Arachne sat at another. And both of them worked furiously for hours with different color threads of flying and just working, working, working away. When the contest ended, Athena was the first to present her weaving and it was beautiful. It showed all of the gods and goddesses just standing on Mount Olympus. And then it was Arachne's turn to show her weaving. She had also depicted the gods and goddesses, but they were in action. Zeus held a lightning bolt over his head. Poseidon was calling upon the, the power of the waves and the ocean. Artemis had her bow drawn back. And go, the list went on and on. And there was no question that Arachne had won the contest. Her weaving was exquisite. So Athena flew into a jealous rage. She tore up the weaving. She crushed both of the looms. And then she cursed Arachne and told her that she would spend the rest of her life spinning. And all of the generations to follow Arachne would also be spinners. And then she shrunk Arachne down, down, down into the world's first spider who hung from the world's first spider web. Now, in reality, silk provides spiders with a natural material that is reliable and durable when performing functions necessary to survival. Did you know that spider silk is stronger than steel, it's tougher than Kevlar, it can stretch five times its own length, and it can also withstand sub-zero temperatures. So it's a very resilient material. As a matter of fact, it is the strongest natural fiber known to man. But in the world of the spider, it's a tool for survival that spiders use their silk to, of course, create their webs. They also use it to catch prey, especially those, um, those spiders that do the hunting instead of the web building. And mama spiders, here's a more gentle purpose for you, that they will take their silk and they'll make a blanket of silk and that's where they deposit all of their eggs. And then they take up the corners of that little silk blanket and they close them up where all of those little eggs stay nice and safe until they hatch. So without that silk, the spiders wouldn't have a home, they wouldn't have a way to capture their food, and they wouldn't have a way to keep the next generation of spiders safe. So fascinating. Now, if that wasn't enough, through scientific innovation, spider silk is set to become the super material of the future. And to think about this, about mm, 20 years ago, scientists decided they wanted to figure out a way to mass produce spider silk. So to get the process started, they extracted the silk producing genes from spiders and combined them with the milk producing genes from goats. And then they created goats that were able to produce silk milk. That's right, as crazy as it sounds, 
there were goats that could spin spider silk. Since then, the technology has advanced and we no longer have to use spider genes, goat genes, or even those poor goats for that matter. And synthetic spider silk can be completely created in the lab. Now, synthetic spider silk is made of 98% water. It's completely non-toxic, especially compared to other materials like Kevlar, which go through a highly chemical process to create that. And synthetic spider silk is also biodegradable, which means it's completely environmentally friendly. You think, well, that sounds pretty neat, but what in the world could we use all this synthetic spider silk for? Well, there is quite a list. First, it could be used in biodegradable bottles and packaging, which looking at uh, overconsumption across the globe would definitely be a win. It can also be used in the production of bulletproof clothing and vests. It can be used for safety measures like ropes, nets, seat belts, and even parachutes. And then when you look at the medical field, synthetic spider silk could be used in bandages, surgical thread, and even for artificial tendons and ligaments and for blood vessel support. So next time you see a spider, before you think about squashing it or even clearing a web, I encourage you to stop. Remember the spider as an artist, forever suspended by a jealous goddess. Respect the web as a tool necessary to the survival of an industrious creature and marvel at the scientific properties of the silk because one day your life can very well depend on it. Thank <laughs> you.